All right, guys, today we've got Mark Forks going public, Teramite made filament, MIT doing some cool new stuff, and 3D printed McLaren engines. So let's get started right off today. We've got Mark Forge going public. Now, Mark Forge, they're a leader in continuous carbon fiber 3D printing, are preparing to go public after a merger deal with Blank Check Company One, which is a special purpose acquisition company. Now, as the deal closes, the combined company will be valued at $2.1 billion with approximately $400 million in net cash to fund growth strategies across crucial verticals and strengthen competitive advantage with new products, proprietary materials, and expanded customer use use cases. Pending the deal's closure in the summer of 2021, Mark Forge will trade on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol MKFG. Kevin Hartz, the founder and CEO of One and co-founder of Eventbrite, says that when launching One, our priority was to partner with a company with exceptional founders, visionaries, and operators taking a differentiated approach in the large and growing markets. Mark Forge happened to tick all these boxes and more, so uh, with the goal to change the landscape of manufacturing, Mark Forge is actually looking to tap into the $13 trillion global manufacturing industry and not just the 3D printing industry. The additive manufacturing industry represents a large and growing market and has gone from $2 billion in 2012 to an expected $18 billion in 2021 and is projected to reach $118 billion by 2029. With this new deal and upcoming additional public offering, Mark Force follows the path of other 3D printed companies that have already gone public, like Materialize, Stratasys, 3D Systems, SLM Solutions, X1, Voxel Jet, and of course, most recently, Desktop Metal, which just had their own SBAC deal to become publicly listed. This is definitely one you won't want to miss, so keep your eyes out for when it hits the market. Next, we've got a great article about mergers and acquisitions helping the 3D printing industry. Much like Stratasys recently buying Origin, uh, over the past eight years, they also bought MakerBot and GrabCAD, and they merged with Object, pushing their capabilities further than ever before. Now, there's not entirely consensus in the manufacturing community as to whether or not these mergers and acquisitions are good or bad for the industry. The positives are often that the purchasing company immediately acquires new capabilities and technology, they tap into new revenue streams, and they increase their market share. However, it can also include negatives like the uh, staff consolidations, uh, dilution of competition, and uh, merging company cultures that fail to jive together. It's a great quick read, so check out the link in the description below. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe and like button. It tells the YouTube gods that we want more of this content and it'll help us get to more people. Also, if you've got any questions or things you'd like to see, we're always open to suggestions, so leave them down in the comments below. Next, we've got Kimya 3D printing spare parts for the railway industry with PEC filament. By the way, we use and sell PEC every single day and the machines and tools to make it easy for you. So check out our website if you're interested in high performance materials like this one. So this railway company was in need of a protective cover component developed back in 1982. Uh, and they recently turned to Kimya to 3D print a small batch of the polymer parts, uh, basically because the mold literally no longer existed. So the spare parts actually had to be redesigned from scratch prior to producing them, and it really shows off another great application for 3D printing. One of their spokespeople said, uh, we compared several technologies for manufacturing these parts in small quantities, and additive manufacturing proved to be the right choice from the economic, technical, and lead time point of view. Now, they're definitely not the first either. Just last month, AM enlisted the help of Italian engineering firm 3DNA to redesign mechanical components for Naples' network of buses and trams. The company actually reverse engineered 3D printed trolley heads, uh, the parts that connect each tram up to the network's aerial power supply lines. And with none of the components available on the market, traditionally manufacturing the assemblies would have resulted in lead times of more than a year. So 3D printing coming in very handy. So, we, you know, talking about PEC, and then there's teramite poop. That's right, we've got scientists recycling teramite waste into 3D printing material. <laughs> Using the powdered wood particles and feces left by the mini school bugs after feeding, the scientists were able to devise a unique circular economy feedstock, which could be binder jet 3D printed without any polymeric additives. Now, to create their wood-based feedstock, the scientists reared a small farm of European and house borers <laughs> and teramites, feeding them for about six months while collecting all of their droppings. As it turned out, all the teramites' six-sided pellet-shaped fecal matter 
proved to be almost identical in size and showed excellent flowability, making them ideal for fabricating uniform layers. In the end, unfortunately, the part exhibited low mechanical strength, and although the scientists theorized that it could increase the solidity, they decided that the material was not well suited for printing ready-to-use objects. Uh, well, I really hope they print a poop emoji, it would just be incredibly appropriate. Anyway, moving right along, we've got Inkbit, a spin-out of the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, or CSAIL, over at MIT, has developed a new additive manufacturing system they claim will revolutionize 3D printing. Inkbit Vista was created using Inkbit's proprietary solution, VCJ, or Vision Control Jetting, and multi-material design software. Now, Vision Control Jetting is the first to use the machine vision and artificial intelligence to deliver a multi-material jetting platform. VCJ enables real-time, in-process, voxel-level control to meet the reliability and performance demands of volume manufacturing. According to Inkbit, the VCJ makes it possible to develop and use products with high-performance polymers, and this is something we have seen a lot recently. Manufacturers are moving away from using 3D printing for prototyping and more towards the end-use production parts. Next, we've got McLaren's new Artura hybrid supercar using 3D printed cores. The new McLaren had a weight reduction requirement, basically, and so the engineers turned to carbon fiber to design a lighter frame, and on the engine side, the McLaren Artura's engine is actually going to be more compact, smaller and denser than a conventional radio flow e-motor. What is particularly interesting, though, is that the engine block and aluminum cylinder heads, they incorporate 3D printed cores. McLaren hasn't actually revealed a lot of information regarding the technology they use, but it's very likely they were made using aluminum 3D printing. Now, in that case, it's likely that a laser powder bed fusion process was used for the 3D printing process, but regardless, the automaker claims that the additive manufacturing allowed it to design a more complex part and include details that would be otherwise impossible to manufacture. The cores actually include a 2 millimeter micro-compact cooling passage between the cylinders, which serves to significantly improve engine cooling. There's also a lot more to this car as well, so be sure to check out the link in the description and go check it out. Very, very innovative. Anyway, leave a comment below and let us know what you thought of this video, the news stories that you thought were cool, or of course, another funny comment. Now here at Vision Miner, we specialize in functional 3D printing, especially high-performance polymers like Peak, Peck, and Ultim. So check out visionminer.com for all the info, the machines, and materials that we sell and help you use and feel free to reach out we can always help you make the right decision for your application it's always going to be different anyway thanks for watching hit that like and subscribe have a positive rest of your day and i'll see you on the next video